Ruler Live is still a bike show for hipsters, and I was back for my second outing. Only the little matter of a global pandemic since my last visit. I've made this video because I filmed a load of high-spec road bikes with my GoPro, and you may want a gander. Also, I want to justify my trip as a business expense. These shots show the vibe. High-end bike computers and component makers show off their bling. There are interviews and panel discussions with pro riders, designers and ultra-endurance athletes. Punters queue for fresh coffee and vegan sandwiches with Italian names. I like vegans. And Italians. But you came here for the bikes, so I'll show you as many as I can in a small number of minutes. Start the clock! This is the Trek Domain that Lizzie Dignan rode to victory in the inaugural women's Paris-Roubaix earlier this year. As a domain owner myself, I took particular pride in the achievement. Then I remembered I had nothing to do with it. The cobbled sections are noted on the top tube. I particularly like the sparkly paint job and the sweet Bontrager Aeolus hoops. But I wasn't the only high profile vlogger interested in the bike. Doesn't she know she's in my shot? Colnago featured heavily at Ruler Live, coming off the back of a Tour de France victory and also being Italian. This fire and ice version of the Colnago V3 RS was designed by Tade Pogaccia. Staying with the Sub-Zero theme, this is the Colnago C64 Disc Italia Frozen Edition. That frosted effect is a special ceramic speed chain treatment, a no doubt very expensive alternative to your bog standard lube. I assumed it was aesthetic. My comment to that effect drew maximum derision from the guy manning the stand. Joy. Whoop! Quick ribble alert! Look at the front forks on that yellow one. And this one. Ribble bucking the trend by focusing on aero bikes over gravel at this year's show. Meanwhile, at the BMC stand, I'm surprised they let this bike into the show. It must be one of those flat bar, full suspension gravel bikes that everyone's talking about. That guy with the shiny arm is BMC's top man. In. The yellow bike is the BMC Urs LT, which definitely shouldn't be pronounced arse. Arse. It has front suspension built into the head tube, controlled by that dial, and I reckon those black bits in the seat stays provide dampening at the rear, for your rear, which hopefully isn't damp. Those fat and not unknobbly tyres help cushion the ride further. Elsewhere in the show, on the SRAM stand, they had the same bike with a proper suspension fork at the front. Far be it from me to suggest that if the bike had flat handlebars, it might be described as a, whisper it, Mönchenburg. Toot! The Specialised Stand. This is the Specialised Crux, which I like a lot. The guys on the stand spent 15 minutes telling me it was a cyclocross bike. I do some follow-up research on Tinterweb and the company calls it a gravel bike. The black bike and the weapon at the top of this shot are both cruxes. I particularly like the smart grey and gold colour scheme. Yes, I am prepared to use the term weapon. No, I am not prepared to say colourway. Talking of colourways, this is a very cool bike. It's the custom painted specialised diverge that Ian Boswell rode in the gravel unbound race, or at least a replica of it. In fact, the retro ivory and turquoise colour scheme was inspired by another bike at the show, a specialised rock combo. Released in 1989 with dropped handlebars and 26 inch wheels, the rock combo was, according to the plaque, sold as an on slash off road bicycle, or to use a term you may have heard before, gravel bike. Very cool and well done specialised, 10 points to Gryffindor. The Tatichi Vento purports to have patented plate absorber technology, which in English translates to an incredibly slim and flat top tube. It's a striking looking bike the top tube reduces to a wafer thin 8mm where it joins the seat tube. This bike is the Shan Drift, which you'll be able to see if these people stopped walking through the shot. Notable Velotuber working here folks. I like the funky single chainring. If anyone knows what it is, let me know in the comments. I'm pretty sure the cranks are Cane Creek. None of it matches the stock bike components on that piece of paper at the bottom. It's Chandler's behaviour. <coughs> 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 <coughs>
we bring you a brief interlude from all the bikes to show you a lot of helmets, in a video made by a helmet. No, we haven't returned to the BMC stand. This BMC Aero road bike is actually a rather expensive placeholder for the wheels. For this is the DT Swiss stand, and now we're into the section of the video showing top-end components attached to high-end bikes. Every high-end bike needs a spectacularly pricey drivetrain, and Shimano were on hand to provide us with a wallet cratering option, in the form of the latest generation 12-speed Jura Ace R9200. This chart shows Jura Ace through the ages. Whoa, the new one is a rod hull of a lot bigger. Oh, that's a close-up. Not to be outdone, Campagnolo also had a stand. Or actually, they were outdone. They didn't really seem to be showing anything in particular off. Even Pogacar's yellow jersey team bike was overshadowed by the special edition Tour de France Colnago we've already seen. Physic did a better job, with the Canyon Air Road belonging to professional Emma Norsgaard on display. If you rode an aero road bike like that in the recent women's Paris-Roubaix, which the photo seems to suggest, that's quite an advert for the comfort of Physic's saddles. The Cervelo stand was busy as usual. I don't know why, it was like this last time I visited. Maybe it's the proximity to natural light coming through those windows, or maybe the proximity to the contents of Wout van Aert's garage. We cyclists are a strange bunch. Most of us have a road bike in our garage that's less than clean. We salivate over shiny, top-of-the-range velocipedes sparkling under the show spotlights. We venerate a bike still covered in northern French cow shit. This dirty Pinarello, which is not a sex act, was ridden by Gianni Moscon in his valiant recent Paris-Roubaix attempt. Whence clean, I'm pretty sure it's a Dogma F. Onto a bike that's definitely not for riding in the rain. Having launched the Team GB track bike for the Tokyo Olympics at the Ruler event in 2019, hope we're back, this time making one live. This chap is laying up a new carbon frame in one of their frankly very beautiful moulds. I'd hazard a guess that this is the most expensive bike at the show. They're on sale to the general public, but Hope hasn't yet sold one. Back to slightly more attainable bikes, this is a rather stunning titanium affair from Passoni. Grrr. Every cycle show needs a bike made out of a tree. Not wishing you to be disappointed, here we have a wooden framed bike from Twimper Cycles. I have no idea if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And no, your eyes do not deceive you, it's another road bike, presumably gravel bike, with a front suspension fork. Now if I was making a front fork out of wood, I'd go with English U. The stuff we used to make longbows out of. Very bendy. I'll email them. In addition to a trend of showing expensive bikes with mud still on them, there was even more of a trend of showing bikes with luggage on, which, it turns out, I'm massively in favour of. I've recently developed a fetish for nicely designed sacs du vélo, as no Frenchman calls them. This adventurous steed is an F slash AR from Fara Cycling, based in Norway. The AR stands for All Road, and the specially designed bags come supplied with the bike. I very heart and very want this bike. Wumpa, there's that Twumpa bike again! And as this is the dedicated gravel bike room, we can confirm that the Twumpa is a gravel bike. No suspension fork on this one though. A bit more bike luggage porn slides into shot and what the f is that? Which clown thought attaching skis to a bike was a good idea? And here from Ribble what I think is the Gravel SL, when you absolutely, positively cannot have enough luggage mount on your bicycle. Italian bike companies tend not to be underrepresented at Ruler Live. We've already had lashings and lashings of Colnago, so where you ask, Arcinelli? Here, I say, showing you some video footage. I think this avant-garde track bike and the gold-coloured Columbus steel frame are both Cinelli's. But this bike leaves us in no doubt as to its maker, the winning bike in the Under-23 Road Race World Championships. Not to be outdone on the being an Italian bike company front, Bianchi, or Bianchi, I never know which, were also there to show off their celestial wares. Celeste? Get it? Which brings us to the Wahoo section, where I'm in danger of being a bit of a fanboy. Not ideal when you're trying to publish somewhat impartial bike tech videos. These shots are interesting, yes, interesting, because they show two, count them, new Wahoo products. First, the Kicker Roller, 
no letter E in the name, and also no need to remove the back wheel from your bike when it's indoor training. The large bracket at the front keeps the front wheel and the bike from toppling over. Second, those speed play pedals are the lesser spotted and still to be released power meter variant, which I've been waiting all my life for. Returning to the wah products you can buy right now, here's the Kicker Smart Indoor Trainer along with the Climb Gradient Simulation thingamy, and both are attached to the super light specialised Ethos, Ethos, Athos, which counts as another bike for this video. It's less clear that this Wahoo Kicker Smart bike counts towards the total, but whatever, I got to ride on it and now I want one for my living room. Here concludes my Ruler Velo Blingathon. I would tell you how many bikes we've just drooled over, but I couldn't be asked to count them. Let's say a lot. If you like nice bikes or just a quick dirty Pinarello, please do give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.